Hello and welcome everyone to What We Know. My name is Jake and I am here with my wonderful and amazing co-host, Sam DeLev, and my, our co-co-host, since they've been on the show so many times, uh, Luis, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm doing quite well. Thank you Good. for having me again, and I'm, I'm sure again and again and again and again. I'm happy to ruin your day by requiring you to tier your babies and choose My which children. ones are, are 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 the best. Today is going to be uh, the thing we don't know is uh, all about the new Pathfinder Second Edition dragons. There are eight new dragons in the Monster Core book. We are going to be tiering them. But here's the thing: we've read through the dragons. We know that they're already all S tier. So, <laughs> and so good. I, I, I love. Them. I'm not going to fight with these two about that. So they are all S tier. What we are choosing is within that S tier, where do they line up? Are they SS, SA, SB, SC, SD? We don't know. The other rule I am requiring these two to follow is that we can have a max of two dragons per tier. So we can't all be SS tier. We have to put them in some fashion or some order. Uh, and we are going to be going through all eight of them. Um, so before we get started, um, I got nothing to say. Let's let's actually just go right into it because I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I love these dragons so much. They, they're all very pretty and they're all very cute and their abilities are wonderful and they're baby. They're so baby. I feel like this this whole thing has been a long time coming. Ever since I even said the word dragon oh. on the very first, <laughs> oh, the very first, the very first episode, you mentioned dragons. I was like, we, we, we got to talk about dragons. And then you wore a shirt with the Mirage Dragon mm -hmm. on like another episode. So you continued the 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 lore behind this. Um, so why don't you talk to us about the first dragon, which is the Adamantine Dragon, which is the primal. Uh, dragon, the first of the primal dragons. This guy right next to me. He a chunky boy. Yeah, he's on the cover. <laughs> he's so he's so big. Um, yeah, the adamantine dragon, uh, as you mentioned, is a primal dragon. Before all of that, actually, let me tell you a little bit about dragons as a whole and how they've changed uh, and get you up to speed on all things dragon as they are in the remaster. Uh, before this, there were a lot of different categories. Of dragons um, and they tended to come like five at a time so there were five chromatics five metallics mm -hmm. five imperials five esoteric primal etc 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 and that's cool and all but it also mm -hmm. means that whenever we wanted to make a new batch of dragons you would always have to do it in groups of five sometimes that works out just fine sometimes you have to stretch and come up with things that may not fit the theme. Sometimes you have too many ideas and you can't fit them all in there. Not not really cool to set that limit for ourselves. So one thing we wanted to do with the new dragons is just get rid of that limit. Will there be at least five primal dragons and so on and so forth for all dragons in the future? Maybe, you know. But we, we landed on four broader categories. We have our four traditions of magic, arcane, divine, occult, and primal. We thought, why not map the dragons to that and figure out what those mean? And primal dragons, which is the one I'm first one I'm going to talk about, is more the animalistic, natural world dragons. They have the most animalistic, bestial features. They are sometimes tied to elements or nature or other stuff. They are just the primal is the word, the most primal of our dragons, uh, and have cool abilities as a result. And I wanted to make sure that when we did that, it showed you not just like, oh, this is a forest dragon and this is an ocean dragon and stuff like that. No, let's come up with other aspects of nature. Minerals are natural. Let's come up with <laughs> what we can do with that. Oh, it could be a mountain dragon or rock dragon. No, we have these cool sky metals. We have adamantine and we have abyssium and we have no qual and all this stuff. Let's tie those to that. Starfinder already had their star metal dragons we can do that too let's update the the sky metal dragons i when i was designing this i actually looked at the the starfinder 1e stat block try to grab as much as i can there's like one or two abilities that didn't make it and i think there's maybe a place for them in the future we'll see i don't know i'd love to come back and give all of these dragons just more stuff 
but uh yeah it, it's it's fun primal dragon hey this adamantine dragon is just covered in adamantine scales and adamantine is pretty much the toughest material available to players out there it can cut through most things like a hot knife through butter i feel like i've disappeared entirely you have, happened there. You have oh my goodness completely <laughs> so yeah the adamantine dragon covered in adamantine scales the toughest material we know in the game uh cuts through like anything like a hot knife through butter and i thought it'd be cool to have a dragon that's just like the biggest toughest thing ever big chunky boy and not only that, but also showcase a couple of different things. Uh, one, different movement abilities than you're used to with a dragon. This one can burrow mm -hmm. and jump out, um, you know, out of the ground and like chomp you and stuff. Really exciting, really ambushy, really dangerous. Um, two, I realized very few dragons, if any, in our game ever had swallow whole. How come we don't do that? Just let you, <laughs> a dragon should just eat you. And the, the third thing I want to do with this is not have it cast spells. Every mm. dragon has at least like one or two innate spells. You know, they had mm -hmm. spell like abilities. They have some kind of just a little bit of casting, even if it's just like, oh, all I can do is like a once per day turn invisible or something. This one has nothing, no magic inherently. Uh, there's always a sidebar that says, hey, if you want to make them into a spell caster, here's the cool primal spells they get. But no, no magic, just all power, all danger. Uh, and he's big and great, and he's really a tough nut to crack. Uh, his AC is really high uh, and all this stuff. And breaking out once you're swallowed whole would be even tougher. So good luck. <laughs> so for me, there were a couple of things that really stood up for the adamantine dragon. One, which was the burrow pounce, which to me very much like to me is like orca whale coming out of the ocean and slamming into a boat, right? Like it yeah. kind of gives me that feel to it. I love that. Um, the abandoned armor, the abandoned armor. I also love that once the dragon gets to a certain amount of hit points that it uh, it loses their or reduces their resistance but they gain movement speed mm -hmm. which i also really love so it wasn't just like oh well oh they're broken or whatever and they're just weaker now and it's easier to tank them tank them down it's oh it's now coming for us now yeah. like we have we have gotten it there and it is now just just running straight so those were the two things that really stood out to me for the adamantine dragon uh sam do you want to talk about anything about the adamantine dragon yes What's important to specify here is that the burrowing pounce is a pounce. The big chunky boy do a pounce. And there we cannot underemphasize how important that is. It's it's my favorite ability when assessing is this dragon baby. They do a pounce. Uh I likewise love abandoned armor because dragons are at least artistically calling on reptilians and mm -hmm. sauropods and abandoning parts of you as a, a to facilitate speed or distraction or anything like that is something that we see in a couple of these dragons and so this feels like a very authentic way and since primal dragons are coded as animalistic to have genuinely Something quite similar to what we see in IRL nature is very, very cool. I do have a question. Yeah. For Luis, though. In, in nature, when things have stuff made out of things, it's often because they ate them. Do they eat adamantine? And is that where their adamantine comes from? Sometimes. Um, it, it mentions that it varies some are just like born covered in adamantine they're magic i don't know that's just how it happens uh, or some, ate a lot. There's sometimes yeah. their scales will like as they grow like as they molt they will get replaced with adamantine um there is a thing that didn't end up end up fitting in here because boy i made these stat blocks really big uh the some of the lore mentioned that what they do if you look at this thing it has a, a massive underbite and I was imagining that being a shovel of sorts mm. that it uses to scoop up. It being made of tough things, it would probably be able to dig through dirt, dig through a mountain really easily. It has tremor sense. So it can see like 
I don't know. We'll say there's like a big uh, cave worm living in in the mountain nearby, and it's hungry, so it just like scoops up and like gets a chunk of, <laughs> a chunk out of that that cave worm, and nom 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 nom, and it also eats whatever rocks and and any dirt. It's swall- it just like swallows it whole, whatever. It's not not a big deal, and that also is. So it, it probably ends up eating some adamantine and then you know that becomes part of its body. But that's also how its breath attack works. Uh, it, I, I literally have it say that it belches up boulders because that's what it's doing. It's like eating rocks and then it just flat. <laughs> so if you were an adventurer and you were wearing adamantine armor, beware because the adamantine dragon might end up wearing you. <laughs> swallow you whole and just worked into the into the carapace it's perfect what a good baby so we now come to our first very difficult decision which is we must put the adamantine dragon somewhere on the tier list insert dramatic music now We had three different tier lists so we could be like here's mine and here's yours <laughs> okay so again I, I uh, we can't put everything uh, in S, but this is our first one. So uh, I, I mean, unless someone has a specific place, I'm fine with dropping our first one in S tier. Yeah. All, All right. right. This is so a S tier have... baby. They pounce. They are chunky boy. So we're gonna move on to my one 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 of my favorite dragons. Uh, and one that apparently got a uh, concern sent to Luis, which is the Conspirator Dragon. Uh, it is an occult dragon, so of course it's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um, g- 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 oh God, what were you, when you thought uh, about working on the Conspirator Dragon, were you just like, how do I make it creepy and cool at the same time? <laughs> I have this thing where I want to creep myself out. <laughs> and I think if I pull that off, it usually means that it will, you know, everyone else will also find it creepy. And so I, I don't know. I feel like I might just have higher standards about things. So like, sure. once I'm creeped out, everyone else will be. Um, so there was a big kind of think tank, I guess I'll say, uh, at, at Paizo that was helping come up with these dragons, right? The idea of an adamantine dragon wasn't, directly my idea i couldn't tell you whose it was but there were a lot of higher end people involved and we were doing a lot of back and forth oh you know what do we want we want you know we want a good dragon we want an evil dragon that's how we get our divine dragons um something that plays with magic okay maybe mirage that's cool but the conspirator dragon was i know the one dragon that like nope that one was mine i came in and i'm just like what if there were a dragon called the conspirator dragon and then people are like oh that's an interesting name what would it do i'm like i don't know but that's a good name right <laughs> <laughs> um and i eventually like got a chance to work with our concept artist in-house concept artist kent hamilton to come up with all of the concept art for all of these uh which is what we've been sharing on the blog the last couple of weeks here and the fun thing is i can just tell i'm like make it gross make it weird here are some abilities i want it to do and it's there are specific abilities that existed before the rest of the dragon existed i had the name and i had specifically the idea that oh wouldn't it be cool that it like trans it you know disguises as people Uh, i wanted to keep the idea of a dragon that hides among civilizations and stuff because that is a classical trope in fantasy rpgs there will be people that come in from other games and like oh i i'm used to a dragon that disguises itself as a local wizard and turns out was a dragon for a hundred years um like okay i want to keep that idea around but let's localize it to one dragon and then let's figure out why it does that Uh, and the things like wouldn't it be cool if when it transforms i was inspired by animorphs uh if it like causes its body to like contort and bend and bones break and things crunch and there's lots of squishing sounds as it transforms so like a good werewolf movie. Yeah. And it's like, why would that happen? It's like, oh, because instead of just using magic to transform itself, it, sure, that's easy. That's fine. But that's no fun. 
what if there was an extra step? What if it creates a perfect replica flesh suit of this person and then it has to squeeze itself into this thing? And the only way it can do that was just, you know, crunching everything and uh, packing itself tight into this thing. This is a medium sized skin suit. I am a huge creature. Well, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yep. Right. Um, and then also afterward, the skin suit specifically notes that, like, hey, once it's done, the magic was the process of getting squeezed into the suit and creating the suit. But once it's made, it's just done. There's no further magic. You can't worry. You don't have to worry about like detect magic giving away that like, oh, there's someone in disguise over there or something going on. It, it, it'll help hide that. And you probably could have gotten away with that anyway. But it's like, no, the skin suit idea is just too gross and the, the yeah. crunching and stuff. I want to have that happen. All right, Kent, let's see what you can do. And then he comes up <laughs> with the general idea of like occult dragons have this thing where they use their Oh, disappearing no. again <laughs> maybe i just don't you're the conspirator dragon yes uh kent came up with this weird thing with occult dragons just as a speech like the tradition of occult dragons all occult dragons have this thing where they particularly like to use their wings as additional limbs mm -hmm. they like tip their their wings forward and like walk on those which is in the artwork you can see the conspirator conspirator dragon having like their arms out holding like an orb or something um when they would walk around, they would just keep that in hand and then have their their wings be their, their front limbs to move around instead. So it's uh it's also got like a tail that looks like an earthworm. It's got like too much skin and it like it's yeah, it's just weird. the just the flesh look in general, like even when it's not, it, it's just it's got this just fleshy tone to it. Like the it's just it, it it's unsettling like the, the 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 coloring of it um for me there was a couple of things that i really liked about uh the retract body the fact is is that it, it if it's getting um um it can like retract a part of its body and like kind of go back into a different form to give itself additional armor i i love that uh the disguise which we already talked about uh this one didn't have a breath attack but instead had detonate disguise. Oh, it which... has a breath attack. Too. Oh, does did I miss it? Uh huh. Oh man. Okay. Well, then I mean, clearly we know where we're gonna where I'm gonna put. This they thing. all have a breath attack. It's okay. Great. So, uh, detonate disguise. Uh, I am just in love with completely because um, it explodes the flesh suit that it was wearing out and onto everyone around it uh, and does damage. And I thought that was disgusting and amazing and I, I just it it instantly was just like that's so cool <laughs> it's there for when it gets found out yeah yeah and it needs to just gtfo or it knows it's going to uh, be attacked and it is just going to start off by doing a bunch of damage you know very um, dramatic very theatrics oh yes it has the smoke breath that's yeah. right yes 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 I, I even put it in the notes smoke breath um I, I, and it has sneak attack too, which is, I think this is the only of the dragons that has sneak attack. Mm, I think maybe Mirage has it too. You, yes, Mirage does. Yeah. Mirage also does. We're not there though. They're, they're not of the same tradition, but in my mind, the conspirator dragon and uh, Mirage dragons are like, like closer friends. cousins <laughs> and then some of the other dragons. They I occupy mean, a similar ecological niche. Yeah. Also, Namely, also, the sneaky boy. <laughs> also, like, magic, even though, like, you know, there's specific traditions, there's overlap, you know, like, yeah. between them. So this makes sense. Um, Sam, is there anything uh, other than how disgustingly awesome this dragon is that you want to talk about? Oh, mission success. Luis, although I personally <laughs> do love this dragon, every time you both say flesh, <laughs> the word. oh, does it ever give me the ick? How do you how do you feel about like the weird extra face it has on top of its head? Oh, that is actually my favorite part. It has a face on its face. Look at your little face on your face. How I mean, can you not adore that? I mean, the conspirator dragon is definitely the Buffalo Bill of dragons, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. 
No, because they are a perfect baby, can do no wrong. They're a sneaky sneakster. They're, their disguise ghosts explode. And my question about this dragon is that mm -hmm. the name came first. Yeah. Uh, conspirator. And yes. usually conspiracies involve more than one being. Are conspirator dragons social? They can be. Uh, the conspiracy they're aspect is just that they're like doing something. They're scheming in some capacity. They're again another bit of lore that didn't fully get squeezed in. Um, but they have like a compulsion to scheme. They just like occult occult dragons have like a weird like some kind of tendency to them. That's just part of their occultishness. Is like a weird thing. That they can't help but doing. Um, and there's in the conspirator, conspirator dragon one happens to be I want to scheme, I want to plan, but I want to do it in secret. Even if it's something like I want to help the kids by donating toys every year or whatever, right? But they have to do it in secret. They just, they, they must scheme and they must be like, they must be very extra about it. <laughs> I mean, there, there's also the aspect of it that you talk about it in the book of the fact is, is that they do change shape to infiltrate and to be social and, and talk and work mm -hmm. with the people that they're pretending to be like, and that they kind of like, I, I, I I don't know if this is correct. This is this is me uh, uh, projecting onto it, but it kind of gives me the um, Men in Black feel, where like the conspiracy theory of of Men in Black, where they're they're either they're aliens and they're walking into uh, an area where they look human, but they just don't talk correct, and they're learning how humans talk you know like it's just kind of like that like that's how i kind of get at least when they first enter into society or into a society and then they kind of like oh this is how my boy cool cords work you know like it, 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 that, again that's me projecting and giving me ideas which is one of the main things that i love about a monster and why i think that this is s tier above adamantine because Ooh. it gives me ideas right off the bat. Like, even though it's not necessarily written hard rules into it, it gives me ideas and it, it sparks me joy. Um, so that's where I put it. I don't know. Sam, do you have a, do you have a vote? I would agree above adamantine. Uh, given that we know that they are compelled to scheme and plan in secret, these dragons would apparently be the best game masters themselves. <laughs> All right, that brings us to our third dragon, the Diabolic Dragon. It is our first divine dragon, specifically unholy divine dragon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, it definitely has a very clear devil, even D uh, maybe even a little bit of Diablo, kind of like artistic wise. Like, it, I'm not saying it. Like, it definitely has those those uh, f feels. Like, if if uh, um, blizzard came out tomorrow and be like by the way the new diablo here's what he looks like i'd be like all right <laughs> yeah that's him yeah yeah that's him um yeah uh, is there anything uh l l we'll start with you Luis, because it is your baby what do you want to talk about about the diabolic dragon other than the fact um that they are doing fire damage but not quite fire damage no, they're doing super fire damage yeah <laughs> super me fire? Me mega <laughs> fire uh the <laughs> diabolic dragon yeah like you said is a divine dragon and the idea with divine dragons is they're tied to planes um in for the most part there's you know possibility for the future where it's not just like oh there's one for the boneyard and one for hell and one for heaven and stuff uh but Good the boneyard dragon yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bone your dragon. Um, all of this is confirmed in canon, and of course, um, the the sooner you send me uh, your credit card number and the three digits on the back <laughs> and your your expiration date, the sooner I can make these dragons happen. <laughs> uh, the, the so the diabolic dragon is our hell dragon, right? It's from hell. Uh, depending on your interpretation of the lore, it, it literally is an extension of hell, right? Which has interesting ramifications for what that means about what hell is mm -hmm. um but it is tied to hell it is tied to evil um as a concept not as an alignment right um 
and it's just bad. And I wanted to make sure we had at least one dragon that did a fire breath. So this one does it, and then it does a little bit more. Whereas uh, a normal fire breath does some fire damage. Great, that's fine. If you are a fire elemental, you don't care. Whatever. Mm -hmm. A dragon can breathe fire in you. Unless it's a diabolic dragon, which suddenly it turns out that it can burn you. And that's represented by it switching to spirit damage instead of fire damage whenever uh, it's more beneficial. So there's just basically its fire breath has two different damage types. It still comes out as fire, but it can find a way to hurt you regardless of how you care about fire. Which I will say is great because as in my home game, I have a kineticist that has fire as one of their elements. So it's like, oh, hey, this is great because now it bypasses anything that they would automatically. And I mean, not bypasses, but it just makes it so that they're not just overpowered against yeah. a specific dragon. It's they like, remain oh, yeah. a threat regardless of what you can do. Exactly. Um, and then and the, that's whatever the, your dragon wants. Yeah. To be a threat. The, the other fun thing is that... Um, in the lore, they end up offering people contracts and stuff like that. They 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 work like a lot of other devils do and try to tempt you and do stuff. They also work on behalf of hell. Sometimes they go and lead armies and stuff. But the the ancient diabolic dragon, the the most powerful stat block we have for it, uh, it's, it's a really small detail that you may or may not have noticed. But one of its in, innate spells is at will. It can summon a contract devil just at any time and be like, oh yeah, you need you need some help? Here, let me summon my buddy and I can offer you something. Hell has plenty of gifts for you if you just want to sign on the dotted line. Uh, so yeah, it, it, just a big old dragon that is mean and, and breathes fire and is particularly uh, evil and wicked and stuff. So for me, the thing I really love about it is Hell Sting, which is uh, the dragon is critically hit with a melee attack, uh, and it turns around and just does mental damage to the person that critically hit it. It gives like, you the stink eye. Yeah, I I I love that. It's like, oh, did you just did you just critically hit me? Like, no one makes me bleed my own blood. That's like literally <laughs> like the feel I get from that. Is is you know. Um, I, that was what I really loved about, about that and the fact that the the fire damage wasn't just fire. It was unholy fire, you know? Well, another design thing I wanted to do was make sure each dragon had a fun and interesting reaction rather than just like, oh, they all do attack sub opportunity or reactive strikes, excuse me. Um, so which like, which we haven't we we talked a little bit about that with the conspirator dragon, the fact that you know when it's critically it hit contorts to avoid yeah. attacks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, Sam, do uh, you want to talk about the devil? I mean, the diabolic. The fierce baby. The fiercest. Uh, Angie. Baby. The Angie baby. Exactly. The one, <laughs> I think, from the art at least, mm -hmm. most likely to sit upon the heaths of hell and brood. Which mm. is <laughs> just that little posture. Just having a hot topic feeling and they are in fact a hot <laughs> dragon super fire what more need i say about a fierce baby uh my question about the diabolic dragon mm -hmm. is uh since each of these divine dragons are tied to a plane and by extension confirmation of of many many babies to come uh can they be born on other planes, they're tied to the plane, but could you have a diabolic dragon yeah, absolutely. from just like a very, very nice place? Can you have a dragon just like from a mall? The elemental plane the, of malls. I, I yeah. believe I believe the conspirator <laughs> dragons called those anchor babies. Uh <laughs> <laughs> conspirator dragon, no. Bad, bad. <laughs> if they were an elemental plane of malls, you could probably see an elemental plane of malls <laughs> dragon. Um they would be diabolic. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, very, so very good for, for me, the diabolic dragon um, is above adamantine, but is not above mm -hmm. conspirator. No, 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 no. You think so? You you think I, the adamantine I, is better than? I think the this S is, the S is locked <laughs> in at this point. For, <laughs> in my heart, the, those are the two that are the SS. Interesting. Uh, Sam, out of the way, right? Sam, what what's your feelings? We'll have to see about that. For me, uh, the baby give me the ick and the baby who pounce 
do beat out the fierce dragon. Okay, uh, I, I have been outvoted, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna move the diabolic to A for now, and it might I can, move. I can if, foresee yeah, it might... being in B, but anyway, we'll oh, talk interesting, about that later. interesting. Okay, okay. I, 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 I would they, be comfortable they can, with that ranking. They can all move. They can all move. This is right now. We're only going Just off calling of... calling it out now that like oh, yeah. Okay, well the next one we have is the imperial dragon, which Ew. is a another divine dragon but it is the holy version of this um we talked about the this dragon um actually um in one of our episodes uh, and uh this is what actually got me the most excited about the dragons really which, That's oh sad. yeah yeah, I mean, I, 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 like you, like I knew we were coming. Like we, ha ha ha. I, I'm talking like it's a sports team, right? Like, um, we did good this weekend. No, um, <laughs> when you came out in, on and talked about it, and I knew you guys were going to be redoing the dragons. This literally, I was like, this, that, that's fucking cool. Like the fact is, is it wasn't just a, a breath attack. The fact that this guy has a halo and can chuck it and like give other people bonuses and stuff like that. I loved it. So what else can it do? Oh, it can do a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got a it's got a, a inspiring presence that exists around it that gives people a bonus. Uh, it also has a a uh, it has something called divine deflection, which is again that critical hit uh, aspect. Uh, but this one it gains resistance to all damages, uh, which I like. Um, it's, it's got like the a champion. Exactly. It's got the halo, which we've already talked about. Um, the halo pulse, where it actually... Um, no, the halo pulse is just uh, how often it comes back up. Uh, no, choose a dragon, one the effect. The pulse is the, the heal that it ah, can do. Yes, yes, yes. And the, Or the repulsion, uh, the restoration, and then it's spirit breath. Uh, I like the four, uh, the uh, this dragon a lot. If you can't tell, I like it better than the diabolic dragon, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, people who know me and know my games uh, are are going to be very confused by that statement, uh, as uh, a lot of my games involve Asmodeus. So, uh, who is not dying, by the way? Yes, we got confirmation. Confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Imperial. Sorry, you were just talking so much. I'm like, you might as well just explain it all for me. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm um, excited about it. Uh, I, I mean, but let's talk about design aspect of it, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, Imperial Dragon, it's the counterpart, it's the Heaven Dragon, right? Um, if we never get a chance to go do the other planes, uh, at the very least, you have a pure evil and a pure good, right? Something very benevolent, something very malevolent. Um, and it can cover most bases in terms of what I need a good dragon, a holy dragon to come and do. And I was thinking, what can it do? It could be very easy to just be like, it does what the diabolic dra dragon does, but inverse it, right? Like, oh, it's good. And it does holy damage and it can summon other beings to help you out and stuff. Like, No, it, it's got to be more dynamic and more interesting than that. And one of the ideas that uh, James Case, senior designer, put into my head is like, hey, the, the, the concept of um a gameplay loop right a thing i was well aware of but like didn't realize like oh yeah that also exists in ttrpgs what is the general thing that you're doing every round every two rounds right uh and i wanted to make sure each dragon had an interesting gameplay loop that's why the adamantine dragon has a pounce and a burrow but a couple of other things it can do to like change things up i did not like dragons very much before i started doing this i i had very limited experience with TTRPG dragons. And for the most part, they just felt like a, a, a sack of hit points and, and stats that all did the same thing, except they had a different breath weapon and looked a different color, right? That was pretty uninteresting to me. And when it came time to run them at the table, it felt like I was doing kind of the same thing with each of them. You fly, you do a breath attack. If you happen to land, you do a full attack and absolutely demolish uh the monk in our group um but it's for the most part when you've seen one you've seen them all right they do different damage types yeah maybe an extra ability or a different spell but I'm like, i want that to be different i want it to be a, a dynamic thing uh feel differently when i'm running each dragon conspirator dragons explode and then have weird stuff adamantine dragons pounce uh and now the imperial dragon how can i make that different maybe what it can do and for the purposes of what it might be used, it stays in place, 
and tries to defend people. If there is a diabolic dragon threatening a city, it will show up, stand between the diabolic dragon and all the innocent people, but also throw out its halo behind it to heal people, to push away any enemies and stuff. And it can exist to a degree on two different parts of the battlefield at the same time with this halo. And that leads to an interesting dynamic by I can be over there doing stuff, but also protect the people over here or deal with the problem over there. And I thought that would be interesting. It does lead to a little more complication of having to keep track where that halo is. But if you don't want to do that, just keep it on it. And anything around the, the uh, Imperial Dragon will be safe uh, and, and protected and stuff like that. And it's just interesting stuff. And then, like I mentioned, the Divine Deflection reaction is just inspired by the champion's ability to reduce damage on an ally, but it does it on itself. Divine Power, Holy Divine Power seems to have the ability to just like resist anything that's trying to take it down. And representing that through the dragon was really fun. Sam? So we have a baby whom's to protect. Yeah. Like like a, a <laughs> fierce German Shepherd, but also has a heal ability. The way that a cat's purr will like heal your bones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hey! Next time I break my bone, I'm just gonna put a cat next to it. Just and put just... a cat right on it. <laughs> FDA cleared kitten. And as I mentioned, whatever time that was, the, the last interview or the one before that, it is, I think, among the eight, the prettiest of the the eight new dragons. It's Big a and golden and, and brilliant. Baby. Right. It's I love the strong jaw. It's glowy. It's it's light and and pretty and protective. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe sweet. I don't know. What is their... So they're very good. What is their favorite thing? What will make them happy if we want to make this sweet, protective baby happy? I feel like they each... They're all individual people, right? But I feel like they each would have like a very specific... Like, this Imperial Dragon really likes raccoons. And this one really <gasps> likes like a very particular f- food. Like I'm really into tiramisu for some reason, right? And they're just like uh they, they find like the one specific thing they latch onto and like, oh, that's like the best. And they just like we'll we'll sit all day like staring at it in love. <laughs> See, if you can make that face as like discussing a dragon, that's baby. Jake. <laughs> That's a more. I, I I mean I like the Imperial Dragon. Like Correct. like like th- there's like like I said it's it's above the diabolic for me like ar- easily. I I mean I know Luis is saying that that he thinks that S is already locked in, you know, but In Sam, my heart it is, but you know. I, I I'm curious of your thoughts uh better than the diabolic dragon? Um uh, I think easily Yeah. Uh more baby. Mm-hmm. For sure easily better than the baby. diabolic dragon. Okay, then the question is, is it better than the Conspirator or the Adamantine to you? Not better. The Conspirator is my number one guy. I mean, yeah, that's me, going to be a hard one to unseat for Louise, I can tell. I, I mean, the Conspirator to me is better in my eyes. So it, it's, it's the, the question is, is it better than the Adamantine in your, in your, in Look, your, you're both allowed to be wrong. This is baby. <laughs> Uh, as so, i said we should have done three different tiers in the <laughs> so what i'm hearing is is you think it's it's better than all of them so i think that uh to 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 make it even i think that we luis luis is like that is is below adamantine uh yours is above conspirator mine's kind of in the middle uh so Take i'm the difference and put it above adamantine move adamantine down. The adamantine down yep a tier and we can but, always we'll Reshake at the end to see if there's mm-hmm. anything that just looks wrong mm-hmm. when we get back to it. So there, there is still a final. The gold event. medalists up in S tier. Yeah, just yeah. the most big because again, all of these tiers are S tiers. These are all S tier mm-hmm. dragons. We're just, it's just within the tier. It's they're all. Perfect. Well, can you can you edit it so it says S S S A. I, I can't on the website, but mm. I can on the video edit. <laughs> I'll just put a sticker. Um, so uh, 
The next dragon, we are halfway through the dragons. The next dragon is the fortune dragon. Um, it's arcane. The um, first arcane dragon. I, I, uh, bef- I, again, I was excited about the imperial dragon. I am equally, if not more excited for the fortune dragon. Um, I fucking love the fortune dragon so much to me the fortune dragon is what everyone saw all of the previous dragons that were like i hoard things because i hoard things like when you think like dragons you think like smog from from um the hobbit right where it's Mm -hmm. just like swimming through its gold the thing that i love about this is it's not just oh i hoard these things because they're shiny and pretty which it, it could be the reasoning behind it but it also uses it actually as a form of attack and defense oh it's like if this is an intelligent being it's an intelligent creature why wouldn't it be using these magical items and all of these cool things that it's hoarded over the generations that it's had why wouldn't it be using it to defend itself against puny adventurers coming into its horde to try to steal from it Ugh, i love it so much um uh, bef- i'm not gonna we're gonna Luis, this is, you go go all you go uh this idea i know for sure came from jason bullman his he's like hey what if there were a dragon that like just sucked up all the magic power out of all the magic swords in its horde and then shot that back at you right it's like oh that's cool let's figure that out and then that led to like oh these magic items stick to it kent's idea of like the gold melting and then giving it like a weird like underbelly that is covered in dipped gold and stuff that i then turn and like okay why does that happen okay well maybe it's magic coursing through its body superheats this gold and just causes it to melt cool there was a lot of back and forth that happened where i'm like hey i can't put the weird head on top of the conspirator dragon now i got to figure out what ability to make use of that right so it's really fun to do that um but for me the what's interesting is i find the fortune dragon because of its abilities in my head i can't imagine it as anything but like the cutest of these eight dragons Mm. it's it's got like an adorable thing it can do uh so but one, one of the fun stuff thing one of the fun things it can do is you know like i said suck up magic and I, I then took that and ran with it. What if it eats up your wizard's spells? What if the wizard casts something at it and then like it's like, oh, no, just kidding. And it chomps it up and then it feeds it and it goes nom, 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 and then spits it back. Um, the idea is that, hey, it can potentially cause spellcasters to lose spells by giving them the stupefied condition, which has a basically a percent chance to disrupt a spell. And if that happens... It can use its reaction to eat up that energy. If it saves against a spell, it can eat up that energy as well. Um, And then it uses that to power its spontaneous spells. We have dragon spell casters in the past, and they're always prepared casters. Like, what if there is a spontaneous caster? Let's mess around with interesting ways to make magic work for a dragon. A new thing we can do again. There's a lot of showcasing of, like, here's now what dragons can also do. Feel free to just go nuts with them. We wanted it make sure that by the end of it people didn't feel like there is one specific way to build a dragon no spells great different types of spell casting that's fine you know does it you know just changing things up all over so the spontaneous spells means that we can when it eats magic just give it a casting back and the way spontaneous spells work we don't ever have to worry about like oh well it used up fireball and it used up chain lightning which one would it get it back it's like no it doesn't matter response spells they can just use whichever one they want uh, but then it's like, oh, well, now let's play with the horde. They're covered in gold. What can we do with that? Oh, they are a big puppy dog. They they can jump out. They're covered in gold and swords and all this other stuff. If they just like shake themselves out like a dog does, that goes flying everywhere. And it makes this big AOE attack that hits everything around it. But then it doesn't have any more gold on it. What does it need to do? It needs to jump in the leaf pile. That is its gold horde. <laughs> and get covered in gold and stuff and everything will stick back to it uh, before it can use that ability. And that's why I'm like, this thing is so cute. I just like ah, da, 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 shaking off and then jump back in and then doing it again. And then occasionally it shoots fireballs out of its mouth <laughs> <laughs> uh, or casts fireballs and shoots force damage out of its mouth that messes up your wizard instead. Uh, the artwork on this is, is 
top tier. I love it so much. I mean, the fact that it's using breastplates as like gauntlets, the fact that it's got, you know, all of the gold that's on it. Uh, and like the metal as fuck idea that it's using swords as like lip piercings. Yeah. Um, it's just <laughs> all very, kinds, yeah. All kinds of dark thing. I love, I love, 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 love that it's so got... much knee pads in the form of like full plate armor and mm -hmm. stuff. yeah i love it sam they shake and they jump in the leaf pile yeah they're perfect <laughs> this sweet little tomatoa of a dragon and they're incredibly inconvenient for adventurers which yeah. is funny to me. It I is. think inconveniencing uh, adventurers full of hubris is hilarious and the stuff of a great time. Um, my question mm -hmm. is that I imagine different fortune dragons would assemble different hordes of treasure. This tends Probably, to be yeah. typical for dragons what if some of them like soft things do they shake carpets at people or something <laughs> like sure. very very fancy rugs yeah fine silks <laughs> but you know the fact is that the dragon shakes it off so violently it still hurts to get whapped in the face with the finest of uh, silk blankets or whatever it's also so just a pure wet have... away so that means you could have an adventurer who comes up off of that attack, just like a bedsheet ghost. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> in the world's most expensive rug. No notes. No notes at all. All right. Well, then that brings us to the rankings. Um, to me, uh, easy, easy top A tier. Uh, I, I could be, ar I could argue in S tier, but I, I, I'm definitely top of A tier in my eyes. You agree, I, Sam? Maybe. They, you think it's they S? Shake. They have they steal spells, which is fantastic, and they shake, shake, and the art looks like this. Like there are just there's just so much flavor, and I think I really liked uh, what you brought up earlier, Jake, which is this gives me ideas, sure. which is one of the best things that you could ask for from a creature beyond simply being baby. <laughs> Okay, so, so for then me, uh, fortune dragon, fortune dragon in S tier, me, I think. I think it, I mean, to me, it is above the imperial dragon. So, uh, so it sounds like we, we are, we are moving, we're moving things around. Like, as I predicted, yeah. the diabolic yeah. dragon got bumped down to B tier. <laughs> <laughs> well, the question is, is it going to make it to C or not? Um, well, we're going to talk we'll about have to the, see. Oh, next is going to be the second primal dragon, the horned yeah. dragon. Um, Luis, start us off. This one is not my... It is my baby, but it's not like... It is part of the family. <laughs> um, so the, the, wow. the reason I say that is because the Horned Dragon isn't an original design. It mm. is an update of the Green Dragon mm. uh, from you know any number of editions at this point. <laughs> um, our take on the Green Dragon was a bit different than D&D's take on the Green Dragon. But we wanted to make sure that things were even more different more set apart a dragon that is green that's not going to get anyone in trouble but calling it a green dragon and having it live in forests and it breathing poison yeah it's a little closer to what dnd &D does let's figure out how to make this different if you've ever seen the the, the, the green dragon in the 2e bestiary or the 1e bestiary it has this enormous like rhino horn let's focus on that let's see what we can do with that and all it really took was Focusing on that, giving it kind of the more animalistic features and deciding, oh, it can probably impale people on that horn to, to really set it apart. So that is the, the, the new twist that we, we gave it. And I think it's a fun time. Uh, it's very simplistic as a result in terms of like, what does it do? Well, it breathes poison and it impales you and it just kind of stomps around. Great. But that's kind of what primal dragons do. They're, they're a little simplistic in terms of what they do but that makes them no less dangerous and i tried to keep as many of the other abilities that you might have known from the the green dragon stat block in the the 2e bestiary and tweaked 
names when it mattered, right? And for the most part, that's that's it. It's it's the green dragon, but it it's has a legally distinct horn. green dragon. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, I will say I do like the idea of a trackless journey. So trackless journey, which is that it covers its tracks um, even when moving full speed. I like the idea of there being a full size dragon in a forest that just people are unaware of. I do like that aspect. You it's know, an amazing I mean? predator. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, I, so I, I I will say like, well, well, not the most unique. I do love the artwork. I mean, it, it looks like this big green moss covered dragon um, and it does have a massive rhino horn. Um, uh, Sam's always got the questions. <laughs> well, so. The, the idea of a dragon in a forest. Mm hmm particularly when they get very large, is so funny to me. Because if you are that size, you're, you're not very meant for forest, but Horn Dragon just makes it happen. Just, just by sheer force of will is large in a narrow passage kind of place. So I suppose my question is, is there even a thought between those eyes, or is the horn dragon brain gloriously unwrinkled? Oh no, it it it's pretty intelligent. It it no, it's noted as generally contemplative with a fixation on knowledge and self discipline. Um, and its hordes are noted as uh, they they're full of like scrolls and tomes and stuff. If you want to win over a, a horn dragon, you might bring it like a really really rare book and be like, "Hey, buddy, do you want to talk? We, we'll trade." Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Lacking it's books does bring it up in my estimation very substantially. It's like a a gym bro who also is like the most well educated, right? Oh, that's a beautiful pitch. I do, I do love uh, Horn Dragon Himbo, but like, um, with yeah. with the with the secret morts. But uh, it's a fun guy. So uh, to me, uh, uh, I think it's below the diabolic. That's where I'm. I'm. I, that's my personal opinion. I, uh, I like it more. You diabolic do not is, like the diabolic dragon, he, dude. He's mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mean is not a criteria. <laughs> what is the criteria? So other than vibes. You could, you could, you could, yeah, true. I mean, you could you could be a conspirator dragon and be mean. I mean that. I mean, it feels like they probably are. Yeah, but you're not inherently seen. mean as a conspirator. Dragon. <laughs> you don't have to be mean. Nice is different than good, as as the great philosopher Sondheim once told me. <laughs> but you know, I feel like I'm going to get outvoted, and that's fine. Where, where are you at with it, Sam? I think for mm, okay, interesting. <laughs> Which one is more likely to be on a medieval tapestry? Mm. This is uh, this thought came to me when we were talking about the diabolic and imperial dragons, uh, because I was trying to think of like in myths of the knight defeating the prototypical dragon. I could see it being the one in the forest. I could mm -hmm. see it being the one that breathes fire. Both of those are like very iconic elements. I could imagine a tapestry where like an imperial dragon is fighting a diabolic dragon and it's like this whole big thing. But also horned dragons do seem like you would be liable to just like run into them in the course of of being part of an Arthur, Arthurian style legend. And so for some reason, are you on a medieval tapestry? Is what uh, popped has, in your brain? Has taken has taken precedence in so, my criteria. Uh, the the only reason I I would say I, I mean I, I understand your your criteria. I, I can see them <laughs> see in my eyes I, I see them equally uh in, in in the the medieval tapestry. The only reason I would say diabolic over the the horned dragon is i think that you can make a diabolic dragon uh a big bad well i think it's harder for you to do that with a horned dragon like a horned dragon feels like um you can you, you would like placement as a gm I, I don't see it ever as a big bad i see it as an inconvenience or like a a thing that they would 
you put as a way to socially get around, but you wouldn't be like, this is the big bad of the campaign. The Diabolic Dragon is definitely that, you know? Consider. Okay, okay. It as a force of nature, right? Uh, you know who else is a force of nature and not necessarily inherently evil or anything, but still the big problem of the whole story? Godzilla. Sure. So mm -hmm. I think there's a world where like, but Godzilla's we, also the good guy in in some of the movies. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But in terms of like, um, hey, are we going through a force? And the big problem that we're dealing with is we are being stalked by this thing. That that is a villain, right? I mean, I'm good with being outvoted. If if you but think it's about, I'm just I'm just, I'm just playing diabolic sure, sure, sure. advocate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right. I, mean, I, that, I will agree with you, uh, Jay. I would put horn dragon below diabolic dragon sure. only because i can see diabolic dragons being more likely to be part of an enemies to lovers trope with the imperial dragon i will not be taking questions this time. <laughs> um so this is going to bring us to which i know is sam's favorite dragon which is the mirage dragon i'm not even going to talk about i'm going to let sam talk about the mirage dragon yes. <laughs> The Mirage Dragon is, I think, just objectively the most beautiful. Look at that color palette. And indeed, the defense ability, the reaction defense ability of this gorgeous arcane dragon is scintillating defense. You are so shiny. It's distracting. And that's, on this dragon, that's so beautiful. They are a sneaky sneakster, as we alluded to. They have sneak attack, uh, but they are also a dazzler with their captivating display. They have the full range of, look at me, don't look at me, which is, <laughs> I mean, they got range while just being incredibly magical in that arcane way. And they can also, if there's not a thing that they do, there's a thing that make you think they do. They have hallucinatory breath. They have shrooms breath. How can you not love the <laughs> Mirage Dragon? I mean, I I really like the Mirage Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, the um the lunging bite makes me think very much of like the stereotypical like um, old school like dragons that were almost like um, long neck dinosaurs where it's just kind of got that like that big snap or like when you think of uh hydras right it, you've got that kind of like long neck that like comes out and bites um i i, I agree with sam like on most of this like it, it, the fact that it's flashy that it's exciting that it's like um it's deceiving like and the fact that it's very close to the conspirator dragon like like they kind of have that overlap. I, I'm a big fan. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the design aspect of like where this came from or where this stemmed from? Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing with our, our magic now is there are no schools of magic. There's no conjuration or evocation and so on and so forth. But there are still broad categories of types of magic. We technically still have the illusion trait to represent any illusion spells. But like something like teleportation magic or fire magic or ice magic are still broad categories and aren't demarcated in the rules, but you can un inherently understand like, oh, this is any magic that moves things around or any magic that deals with ice. So it's we wanted to represent two different aspects of the arcane dragon, one which is just, or our, yeah, of our arcane dragons, one which is just a full mastery of magical power, and that's fortune dragons, and the other is full mastery of a very specific subset of magical power, and that's the mirage dragons, where they have control over illusions. They are just the best illusionists uh, out there. So that's really where that came from, and then just having the idea of like, oh, it can camouflage, it can uh, take advantage of that. How would it hunt, right? If you see it, it's kind of a thinner dragon compared to all the other dragons very lean uh very serpentine why is that i thought probably because it doesn't need big muscles to sprint or to grab you or anything because it uses its magic it gets 90 percent of the way there with its magic and the other 10 percent is it lunging out through the illusion at you with its neck right like that's it's all it needs to do so not much there i think it's I feel like pretty self-evident that it's like, we just wanted an illusion dragon. What does that look like? And Mirage is just like an amazing word for that, I think. Correct. 
Very correct. Uh, Sam, I know this is your favorite. So I'm going to let you start so that we can sell you down on it. So. <laughs> uh, look, they're shiny. They're shiny. The shiny dragons are thus far my favorite dragons. And Louise has already admitted they occupy the same ecological niche as the conspirator. So you get to be shiny and Sneaky like the conspirator? I I don't know how. So you're you're, you're that's, saying that's you're saying top, top of S for you. Look, Ooh. oof. Mm. I I understand it's a hard sell, mm -hmm. but also it's objectively correct. I I I see. I'm a I'm a top of A. Um, that's where I'm at. I think it's very cool. I think it's very interesting. I think that both the conspirator and the fortune are better. <laughs> oh gosh, it must be tough to be so wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, oh, I Louis, feel like you... I need to stay out of this, but um, <laughs> maybe top of A is also where it would land. I think I more of a fortune dragon guy than i am a mirage dragon i, I mean it's and the i dog can't aspect, give up you know the uh the conspirator being my top boy so <laughs> i mean i i feel like sam has been outvoted on this one so we're gonna I move think so as well i acknowledge fortune is flavorful uh conspirator you I got my eye on you but <laughs> you know i okay. accede to the will of the majority this brings us to my favorite dragon, which is the Omen Ooh. Dragon. And the reason it's my favorite is because it does something that as soon as I tell anyone about it, I can guarantee you their response is, oh, shit, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is the fact that it has the ability to... Uh, um, make your fortune happen before it happens and, and gives you the doomed condition, can give you the doomed condition uh, while, while you're still alive, um, which is absolutely frightening and absolutely just terrifying. The fact is you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm a big tanky boy and I've got all this health and we've got, uh, 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 you know, a life uh, omen uh, or life, uh, um, not omen, a life. Um, Oracle. Oracle. So, like, I'm never going down. Like, I got all these hit points. And then the Omen Dragon comes in and is like, oh, yeah, you're doomed one. Oh, you're doomed two now. Yeah? You want to come at me? You want to come at me? I don't give a shit about your health points. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, that, I mean, that and the the Omen Dragon is just beautiful like i i the blue is such a great royal blue it's i don't know if it's actually royal blue but it's like the blue is gray i i love that it's got like these antler like s things um it it, it feels like it pulls on from a lot of um a lot like the art at least pulls from a lot of different areas and i also will say um uh, reviewing reviewing this with a a coworker when i gave them like the just like talk to them about it uh and i showed them the dragon they were like that that wasn't what i looked like what i had in my mind but this is better than what i had in my mind <laughs> um which is is like great to me so um Luis, you want to talk a little bit about the omen so that I don't continuously talk about the occult dragons because they're my favorite? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> omen dragon is one of those where the name came first. I remember someone threw the word omen dragon into chat and we we're like, ooh, that's a cool name. What do we do with that? Right. And I landed on it can see the future. Right. And making it an occult dragon, its compulsion became it not only can see the future, but it must share what it knows. Right. It doesn't care who it tells. It doesn't care if it tells the evil tyrant or like the young uh, farm boy that's going to be the great hero of the day or whatever. It just needs to say, hey, I saw this. Figure it out. I don't know what it means, but here it is. Right? Um, and that immediately is just ridiculous adventure hook potential. You are a level one hero. An omen dragon shows up and blurts out some weird prophecy and then runs off um will it work in the setting i don't know probably not but like it it saw something right and it probably is 
more accurate than any other prophecy that can exist at this point but mostly because it's a short-term prophecy like anything like a thousand years from now a great king will rise none, none of that works but hey tomorrow it's gonna rain fire from the sky maybe you gotta be worried about that uh and just giving it like it sees time and and all existence in a weird way was just kind of a fun thing to play with um i mentioned that it is constantly seeing visions of the future and it's basically like if you left a radio on at all times you could hear the music at all times but you can maybe tune it out and then maybe focus on it when you hear a song you like or, or something interesting comes on but it's just always there in the background there's nothing you can do to stop it and those are always happening and sometimes it, it helps to be a pressure release valve to, to tell someone about that but then it's just like okay now what else can we do what what fun mechanics can we play with you know re-rolls and stuff because of fortune effects great um logan bonner our lead designer came up with the walk to timelines thing which was really really cool where it basically there are two of them and then they merge into the one timeline but it basically gets to go attack two different people uh does weird stuff uh the doom aspect was something that james case mentioned he's like we don't doom enough things like, you're right let's do more <laughs> things agreed uh, agreed and i i just like the idea of how does it share its its knowledge well you can basically we have spells like that that they can do that agree um but it can always share that with whomever it wants so let's figure out a way to to make its prophetic wings work and then they're just they're just living plot hooks like i said they're they're layers i mentioned that they have sometimes multiple layers each with like a very special item that it knows i need to keep it here the right person will find it but i don't know why or or what it is or whatever but just this needs to be here because i have foreseen it okay i'm gonna go do that somewhere else now they're just all over the place they're ridiculous and uh, hopefully people enjoy the potential that comes with all that I, I find that if you have the ability and you're forced to just continuously see the future and know what's going to happen, I feel like you're going to be like probably the most unsettling and awkward person in the entire world. Because like, how do you communicate with anything else that cannot see what's going to happen? And it's not just like, oh, bless you. What? Shoot. You know, it's not like stuff like that. It's like, it's like the fact is, it's like, oh yeah, I know who's going to die tomorrow and I know what's going to happen. And like, how do you live with that fact? And I, so I, I imagine Omen Dragons, again, this goes back to like one of the reasons why I love them is it gives me so many ideas is like, I imagine an Omen Dragon is just fucking weird. And it's just like, yeah. they may blurt something out, but you're like, wait, is that tomorrow? Is that next week? When is that? And who is that affecting? What kingdom? And they're just like, okay, so then Tuesday I was thinking about having tea. And you're just like, no, you literally just said it's going to rain down fire tomorrow. Like, where? Oh, uh, like, what? Fire tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, that, like, you know, and they, they continue on because they're just like, yeah, why do I need to relive the thing that's already going to happen? Like, we got to do that once already. So I just, I, I, it gives me, it gives me all the good brain juice, you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sam? It is also clearly the dragon most likely to become a professional meteorologist. <laughs> You yeah. picture the weird, off-putting dragon. Well, fine. I picture the weather person dragon. I think there's there's a lovely little cozy uh, omen in 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 my heart uh, that someday will be in a story. And prophetic wings just have to be so cool, like yeah. pretty, like in terms of pretty baby. Prophetic wings. Let us consider. Let us just pause and consider what a good baby. Um, so I suppose my question is what uh, what can they not see with their with their wings? Do they just put their wings over their face and then read their wings? Just like um, uh, it's too much. I am. <laughs> I imagine what it is is they like. Uh, I don't remember if the description made it in, but it says that I know that they have like mirror-like membrane on the inside. The webbing on the wing is mirror-like, and they open it up, and you look into the wing, and that's where you see the future. Right? Um, and it can look into its own wing and see stuff whenever 
um, but they can also share like, hey, do you want to see a thing? Here it you go. It smells its armpit for the future. <laughs> yes. Um, and it doesn't know what it's going to share with someone. It just knows that it can open up its wing and let them see something. Interesting. Mm. That's so cool. And it info dumps. Yeah. What Like, we are all this baby. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Now, the hardest point, which is to uh, uh, rank the final one. Um, we know where I want it to be. So, I, I you know, let's hear it from everyone else. Um, Sam, what, where do you think? Here's the thing. I, well, because all dragons are S tier and all dragons are baby, uh, there's, I love all of them. And so, you know, on what basis do I do this tier list? I think my favorite that we've discovered as we go through this is, do, does it give the best story ideas? Can, are you inspired by reading about and experiencing this sure. beautiful, lovely baby? And like that, it it is indisputably S tier by that standard for me. That's just that's just very good. There's like personal favorites, but as Louise points out, this is an individual tier list. This is a collective tier list, and I think we can all agree on that. Plus, like the Fortune Dragon, it thwarts adventurers. Um, <laughs> doom is to undermining your your uh, chonky thwonk thwonk, as fortune is to undermining your little uh, magic book nerd. So, so you know, you got two right up there that just make adventures real sad, um, and that's kind of fun. Where so where would you? Would so so we got you in S tier. Uh, what about what about you, Luis? Where do you feel that the omen belongs? Um, I was thinking like A ish tier, but okay. I mean enough S's are bumping it up to. <laughs> the question is, does it bump the Fortune Dragon off the the S tier? I mean, or yeah, not? I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's in S. So the question is, is um. Well, okay. We're well, gonna, I guess it does bump the fortune dragon yeah, off the matter. Yeah, no matter but like, okay, so we're, we're going to do this. We're just going to immediately just move that around. The question we bump is, conspirator down. That's the question: is what what lives in S? Does conspirator move down to A? And no, absolutely not. <laughs> if we're talking about like story potential, like conspirator dragon, just as likely as an omen dragon to show up and suddenly change the game right okay so then the question is is it above or below the conspirator oh easily above i mean if i, look, I if i'm not even if i'm not even putting the ick boy you know my, in my feelings on it here, I, know. <laughs> I know i know because the icky boy is your baby i get it He's so gross i love him <laughs> I, I I think I think we're I think conspirator is is top S tier and then I think Omen is second. That's and I think you know if we're gonna look at it, I think that's where Luis is going to uh, also vote that. Um, so we are done with our tier list. Um, and since it was collective, no one's happy, which is wonderful. Which means that's how that compromise works. That's how compromise works. Exactly. No one's happy. But I'm curious about what your tier list is. Where do you put all of these dragons other than S tier? Clearly. Um, head down to the comments and let us know what, what you all think about it. And also let us know what you want to have Luis on next time and talk about. Um, I've got some ideas, but I'm curious about what all of you want to uh, see us talking about. Um, Luis, is there anything that you want to add on other than how wrong we are about the Dragon tier list? Uh, no, it's it's we're all working together on this. Uh, there are so many dragons we have left to remaster right we just did the green dragon we still have nine other dragons i'm hoping to someday see some opportunities to remaster some more and also just make new dragons i have ideas that i'm i'm hoping to out icky myself and be <laughs> like oh you thought the conspirator or conspirator dragon was bad you know someday i'll get a chance to do that we'll see if there's a, a book that works for that in the future but i i went through all this and i'm like oh i'll now, of course, I got to do this, this, this. I have so many more ideas. Like, I'm surprised I was able to just narrow it down to these eight. But I think the the deadlines and stuff that were like, we need to remaster Monster sure. Core sure. right away. Let's just work on these eight. Um, 
and all that stuff. But it's like, now I have time. Maybe now I like go back to Kent and be like, let's, let's figure out some other gross things or really pretty things or, or, or interesting things or how to just like tweak existing dragons. I, I foresee us just coming out with new dragons uh, all the time in the future with just like m more ideas, the, the possibilities that the four traditions have opened up for us and the lack of like being locked into five dragons or whatever. Yeah. There's just a lot of, a lot of potential there, even if it's just like, Oh, well, let's take the red dragon and update it to something just a little different, a little more interesting. What can we do with that? How can we play around with that? Um, I, after m writing all of these, I'm like, Oh no, dragons are awesome. They just weren't being given the, the, the chance to truly shine in, with the way their statistics work in, third edition and thus over to, to first edition pathfinder it um the it was very formulaic in a way that i hope i upended and inspire other people to make cool dragons and get it get, get excited for using any of these dragons it, it will be like the best thing to hear someone just immediately be like i saw this dragon and immediately wanted to put it into an adventure right um which is never how i felt when i read previous dragons but now i'm like oh yeah any one of these, I can run a whole campaign based on just one of them. They're they're the they're the big, not necessarily the big bad guy, but they are the reason for the campaign, and that's that's what I think is the most exciting. Which is a great uh, compliment to hear from you too. It's like, yeah, I have so many ideas for these dragons. Good, that means I did my job right. <laughs> oh, so many ideas. I mean, I, I I like when I was going through, I was like, how do I add as many of these in without making it a dragon campaign? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we haven't had dragons thus far. How do I how do I add these in here, like as many as I possibly can because they're all very cool and I can see each one of them having their own place in a world that makes sense. That like, but it's not a dragon campaign, but I want to play with all of them. <laughs> Hear me out. Make it a dragon campaign. There you go. Thanks for you. Hope that helps. I was say the, the easiest thing to do is just have everyone cast summon dragon, and you can sure. call any of these dragons around. Sure. I, and I mean, like, I we joked about it, but like, you mentioned it again, and the thing is, it's like, it, it does give me ideas for other dragons that, that have it, that, that aren't a part of these eight, you know? It's like, um, with our home game, there is a big aspect of, you know, spirits and ghosts and stuff like that. And so like a boneyard ghost or a boneyard, uh, uh, dragon sounds very, sure. very interesting. That would be very, very cool. Or like a dragon that can bring things back to life. Yeah. Like a psych, a psychopomp dragon would be really yeah. fucking cool. You know? So we're going to be adding to this tier list as Luis <laughs> adds more. to our horde of dragon babies yeah. we are the yeah. fortune dragons <laughs> of dragons <laughs> yeah there's there's a lot of like white space is there and it's clear that like there are shapes and stuff within that white space so i'm excited to see what people do with that uh even if it's not us right it, it might be us in the future but i want to see what abilities people are inspired to to come up with because suddenly i think dragons are just a little significantly more unshackled than what expectations might have had uh, for them in the past and significantly cooler like in, in all seriousness like this is not me blowing smoke like i am not the conspirator dragon um uh, <laughs> but like just what like a conspirator, a conspirator. <laughs> <laughs> i am not the conspirator yeah, no um uh, sugar, water, sugar. <laughs> water, more. Anyways, um, yes. So, like, the the thing is, is like, this is very exciting. This is very interesting. Like, I I I agree a hundred percent. Like, there is so many. Like, I I agree with you. Dragons were dragons were dragons, and the only time I ever used dragons was like, as like a reference to oh, there's a big thing. You know what I mean? Like it. Like I didn't find them interesting, but this. Um, makes them unique and one of the things that I really love about Pathfinder is that um, all if not most creatures are unique in the sense that it's not just like oh here is a stat block um, that is very similar to the other stat block but this one is undead you know what I mean like it's it's they're unique in the sense that their abilities are unique and it's not just here's bigger number for undead and here's a bigger bigger number for undead it's like mm -hmm. no this one this one throws its head and 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 this one over here you know has an aura and it has like unique aspects and it's good to see that with the dragons and um I I love it I'm just glad to see you all acknowledge 
that dragons are amazing and fantastic and perfect. And we love them. We love and them. If you love today's episode, give us a like and subscribe and let us know which dragon you think is most baby in the comments below. You can also catch us on twitch.tv slash Althaven underscore where we stream RPG content. You can join the conversation on our Althaven Discord. And if you want to support us, you can do so on coffee.com slash Althaven. So claim your draconic destiny. And until next time, keep it weird, internet.